Hey, Foot Clan. Before we start today's show, let me tell you about one of our favorite, favorite sponsors of the show. We're talking about the Sports Manias app. If you don't have it already, this is an absolute game changer for fantasy sports. You import your teams from CBS, ESPN, or Yahoo in this free app, and it will give you an absolute edge on making smarter roster moves. All your content in real time dominate your fantasy league with the Sports Manias app for free. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. We're back. We're dancing. Hello, everybody. It is Thursday, October 22nd, 2015. We are now at a timeline that is beyond the prophecies <laughs> we can't go of back. back to the Future. I will admit, I am here mostly in body, oh. not in mind after the... You're telling me. Welcome, I, welcome to a bad show today. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. But my, uh, my voice is a little, a little hoarse, and it wasn't from cheering for the movie. It was from many hours of eating food and staying up late and watching all three movies. So worth it for the Back to the Future Marathon. I'm was... sure you saw us spam our own Instagram account with pictures from the from the marathon. I was prepared. Oh, there, man. there was a you, gentleman. You sure were. I did not know. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't go along with the fellas, but I saw that Marty McFly showed up to the movie theater with a handsome, a random, fancy beard. A Hip- random stranger walked up hipster. to us and said, "Can I get a picture with you?" <laughs> and just took a picture with Mike and made me take it. And then there was a guy there that had the Nikes th- with the uh, power, you know, all the electricity flowing through them. Well, nice. the, not the new power ones, but the, the ones that they released a couple years ago. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was we awesome. had a good time. Uh, for some reason, the entire audience cheered when the October 21st, 2015 date came up. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, was so looking ar- I was looking around for Robert Zemeckis to see if he was <laughs> there, like they were cheering him on, but he wasn't. We got a good show for you today, <clears throat> assuming I can speak. We've got our uh, we got some news and notes. This is my favorite show of the week. We got our week seven preview and our starts of the week. Yeah, you know. So stay tuned for that. You don't want to miss the starts of the week. We're gonna uh, tell you who we love, and then you know you can start them or not. Either way, but I would start them. <laughs> you can find us on the web, thefantasyfootballers.com, on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Like I said, we're on Instagram. If you want to catch up with the uh, behind the, the scenes, behind the scenes, yeah. And uh, definitely check out jointhefoot.com. We had a ton of people jump in yesterday, join in the discussion for week seven. So that's a good time. We're on YouTube and we are broadcast on the Fantasy Sports Network. So we're everywhere. We're everywhere you want to be. Visa. I know. <laughs> wow. You just like yeah, it's a free... gave them a free yeah. ad. Everyone's got it in their pockets. All right. I feel like that's not fair. All right. Quick question of the day. How do you approach fantasy football trading and then i got a follow-up to that but how do you i mean that's a big question i know but give me give me a couple things that you look for when you are making trades when you're offering them receiving them people actually you know they ask us questions all the time about this type of a thing you know how do you put a deal together slash you know do you talk to the person before you send the offer over i mean it sounds funny but there's a a, a way to do it i got a couple tips one of the things first you analyze your roster and you say what what do I need and what are my assets to give away, right? Get a, get a kind of an idea of what you want to do. Don't just be like, I want to trade. Um, <laughs> and then once you go, okay, well, I'm going to try to package my, my second big tight end or whatever you're giving, go look at the rosters in your league and just start by looking at the teams who have the needs that match yours. Otherwise, you're just kind of – I mean, that's what I do. I look – I need somebody who doesn't have a quarterback or doesn't have a tight end or doesn't have a running back or wide receiver, and I look through the rosters, and that's how I start my trades – and one other tip that I like doing, I really like trading with people who have, uh, who either have a losing record or are coming off of a loss because they tend to devalue their players more than they should. And people coming off of a win value their players more than they should. So you tend to find a little bit more tilt on uh, teams coming off of a loss. Uh, and right about now, a, a thing that I like to do is from a position of power, if you have it, look for a team who maybe has uh, one of their stars on bye week. And if you yep. have some ammunition to to put towards grabbing that star because that, that team needs to get a victory this week, 
uh, th- that's also a, a sneaky play that I enjoy. And I'll just add in, be careful when chasing the numbers. Okay. So what I mean is I, I saw some trade offers come across. People wanted my opinion on, and it was things like giving up Kelsey in a package for Ben Watson Oof. at tight end. And I told, you know, my, my feedback for that person was, look, if you, you know, there were other players involved. If you can do this trade and ignore the Ben Watson piece and have another tight end lined up somewhere else, but don't chase Ben Watson's career highest week when he's been in the league 47 years <laughs> and he's not going to repeat it. It's just yeah. not going to happen. No, generally, I'm, I'm targeting players, it, it, in, unless it's a very specific thing, I'm targeting players that have been underperforming. I'm, I'm looking to grab the Jeremy Hills and before last week, the Lamar Millers and those guys who I believe are going to bounce back who aren't, as opposed to the exact opposite of chasing the guys who are doing more than you expected. Oh, man. And if you want, like, kind of a black hat way to do trades. Then Andy will give it to you. Was this <laughs> a covert op? Well, I, I think there's a psychological thing that happens. This is just getting well beyond what we should be talking about. But there's a psychological thing that happens when you redundantly offer something. And the person, it could be bad, right? It could be a semi-bad trade. But when it's repeated a few times and then you throw something in on it, it starts to sound better to the person because oh. they've said no a few times. They didn't say no to the one where you throw in a little pick at the end or you throw in an extra player at the end. But once you come around to the fact, oh, you know, you're right. Let me just throw a little something extra in there. It starts to look better. We are big fans here at the Fantasy Footballers of those two-for-one, three-for-one trades. I thought you were talking about psychological and manipulation. And psychological warfare. Those two <laughs> things are pretty much what we're known for. As so. I said, go get it. <laughs> go yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into the news and notes. News and notes from around the league. Thursday's always an interesting news day because you have kind of uh, borderline you know, information on these players, but you don't have the Friday news and the Thursday practice reports yet. So we don't know definitively about some injuries, but we kind of give you the update for them. One guy we do know definitively about is Mr. Sammy Watkins, ruled out for week number seven. Does any fantasy team care right now? Uh, not at the, not at this point. I can't imagine there's anyone who was was uh, with all the hanging bi- on the edge for Sammy Watkins. <laughs> with all the bye weeks, I, I know that you know I've got him on a couple of teams, and it's like ah, I really could have used you, uh, but it, it's right. probably good news for him because I, I believe their bye week is next week. I could be wrong about that, but I believe it is true. So this will give him some good time to rest up, come back strong. Well, and Tyrod Taylor's been sat down too. Yeah, he's out. He's out. And Percy Harvin is out. out. He's out. The Bills. You know, and I I really liked Robert Woods as kind of a streamer. I still do for this week, but EJ Manuel's going to be behind center. Is there any – I mean, is there any way you stream EJ Manuel? Oh, well, Uh, maybe. What? Maybe. Okay. All right. right. I guess we're going to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculously uh, um, NFL Network we're going to talk some of the injuries for tonight the report is that Carlos Hyde is going to give it a go tonight on Thursday night football Anquan Bolden also has a hamstring injury he's a gamer he'll probably play but he is you know just bear that in mind if you have another option generally if you have Anquan Bolden you have another option that's probably in the same category as Anquan Bolden so I, and also just bear in mind if Anquan Bolden does not go uh, you have to downgrade Colin Kaepernick even more, in my opinion. Yeah, is there any chance that the 49ers uh, win the game tonight? Yeah, absolutely. There's a chance. It's in San Francisco, right? Yeah, and it's just division games. Wacky things happen. Also, in division games. that's good he, because not... I'm facing the Seattle D in one of my leagues. I just wanted some hope. Yeah, that would that would be great if the Niners would win, uh, but they probably won't. That being said, uh, Seattle has not been good against the tight end. Vernon Davis has practiced in full this week. So, you know, if you're hurting for a tight end, yeah. it's a decent uh, stream. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out, too. Yeah. So, uh, Carlos Williams did not make the trip to London. We know that. Another Bills guy that is not playing it's this shady, week. It's Shady McCoy time. I know. I, now, I still feel like Carlos Williams is a good guy to grab right now and put on your roster. Yeah, I noticed. I agree. I noticed. Did you bid for him, too? Yeah. I outbid you? I was the only person that bid on him, and you outbid me in one of the leagues. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Uh, Big Ben, what do, what do we know about Big Ben this week? Is he going to go? Big Ben practiced on Wednesday and said dun, dun, that dun, he dun. was relatively pain-free, and so it sounds like for the introductory practice, everything went well. There was no setbacks. I expect him to play because Big Ben is a big, tough man. 
who plays after motorcycle accidents and things like that. So I I think he plays and in every maybe that's just the Antonio Brown owner in me <laughs> who is begging Big Ben to play even though I think Landry Jones is a uh an upgrade for Antonio Brown over Michael Vick, but Big Ben coming back would be a a monster uh, upgrade for that's, Antonio Brown. That's what I was going to ask you. What What is the impact across the board with Big Ben? Oh my back, goodness, back it's into humongous. The, even mean, if he's, you know, is he going to be the same guy? I don't care. Week one yeah. against the Kansas City secondary. Yeah, I mean that's just the juiciest matchup to come back for. It, Big Ben would terrorize those guys with Martavis Bryant back in the lineup and Antonio Brown. Everybody, everybody. You goes see up. how mad Antonio Brown was when the ball bounced off his shoe. Yeah. It was just kind of that like was because that was like a culmination of. I just, know of, it was like this is not gonna. I'm not gonna put up any numbers. The guy's tonight. working hard to get open, and, and he's getting open, and they're and they're yet they excited. went two and one without Ben. Yeah, good good job, Arizona. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's been a while, <laughs> but the the tweet started rolling in on uh, Fred Jackson. <laughs> oh, because. For some strange reason, this keeps happening. Um, is he, I'm, is I'm he sorry, okay? Fred Jackson. Ooh. Is he all right? Yes. He's, he's already been looked over by a medical staff after his car crash leaving practice. Shame uh, which, on TMZ coming out right yeah. away and saying, oh, it's a drag racing incident between the guys. Yeah, and then the police investigated and said, no. No, no not at no all. Drag. But that's already out there. Yeah, like you said, good work, TMZ. They're TMZ. <laughs> like, that's what they do. I understand, but you just, man, you got to be careful about that stuff. You can't just throw misinformation out because you want to be first. It's ridiculous. Uh, but Fred Jackson was looked over by the medical team and cleared, and he's good to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got that. Back to the future. Uh, Malaria? Yeah. All right. So, anything else? Big news. D Jax did not practice. We know he had a setback. He's probably not going to play. Dez is 50 50 to play. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. All right. Jeremy Macklin sat out of practice yet to pass the concussion protocol. We'll have more information on Dez and him and other guys tomorrow when we do our in and out segment. Giants coach Tom Coughlin said ODB will not practice on Thursday. I'm not worried about that. It, it, everything says that he will still play. We've seen the same exact thing happen with Julio for many weeks where he is uh, not practicing and then he plays. Uh, and like I say, Carlos Hyde should be good to go tonight against the Seahawks. Not exactly a juicy matchup for a guy who's been kind of uh, getting the carries but just not doing that much with them. Yeah, and that, uh, that upgrade you get when Bobby Wagner is out, like we saw for Jonathan Stewart. I believe Bobby Wagner is back. Yes, so he's back at practice. Goodbye running advantage against Seattle. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and take a minute. You heard Jason talk about it at the top of the show. We want to thank Sports Manias for sponsoring today's podcast. You've heard us talk about it. Sports Manias is an incredible app, and they just added a really, really cool feature. If you could uh, peek into this uh, communication between me, Mike, and Jason on a regular week, we communicate so many times with memes and just insulting pictures to one another when we're talking fantasy football. And the Sports Manias app, they just added a brand new fantasy football emoji keyboard to the app. And it has memes in it. It has uh, pictures of, of teams and plays. And it's a really great way to smack talk one another. Yeah, you Have can, you tried that out, Jay? Uh, I, I have tried that out. And I think it is fantastic. In addition to that, uh, one of the things I like is that it gathers information from all sorts of social media you know we we find that one of the best ways to get the best most breaking news is from twitter well they actually do the work of following the right people you put in your favorite teams and in your stream is just the most up to the date it, it really is a, a game changer for fantasy so if, if you it's don't simple. have sports mania's app it, definitely get it yeah download the free sports mania's app for ios or android import your team dominate your league a b c done yeah. Done. Yeah. Done. Speaking of done, you know what's done, fellas? Getting our tickets for the big Monday night showdown. ba -boom. The Arizona Cardinals versus yes. the Baltimore Ravens. And how did we get those tickets? With our good friends at SeatGeek. We used the SeatGeek app. We fired it up. It was super easy. We and used we, our own promo code. And we, Of course, our promo code of footballers. And we got some great tickets. So listen up, Foot Clan. This is, this is what SeatGeek does. They, they pull in ticket options from hundreds of online ticket sellers. It's a one-stop shop. It's the only place you need to go because they grab tickets from everywhere. You're seeing all the best deals already. 
They easily label things with the with their feature called the Deal Score. Ranks the the market one to one hundred. Uses a color coded interactive map. And I'm that, telling you, if you've not used the Seeky app, fire it up. You get to zoom in and out. You you get complete control of where you want tickets. It is it is by far the easiest ticket app we've ever now, used. Now, do they do they allow you to select the amount of fantasy points you want from the players in the game? Unfortunately, they do Dang. not do that. <laughs> Working Dang on that. They are, that's, that's the new upcoming feature. <laughs> that's on but, iOS, next, the next edition. So And, they, and they, they make the ticket buying process seamless and easy. No more squiggly letters and all that nonsense CAPTCHA garbage that screws everybody up. You put your credit card in. Bingo, bango, bongo. couple taps here. You got, you got yourself some sweet tickets. It's good stuff. Everybody who's used it loves it. So here's what we need the Foot Clan to do. You download the free SeatGeek app today. You enter our promo code FOOTBALLERS in the app. And you know what SeatGeek's going to do for you? They're going to send you 20 bucks, a $20 rebate on your first SeatGeek purchase. Every ticket purchased on SeatGeek is backed by a 100% guarantee. You buy your tickets, peace of mind. You're good to go when you get to the game. So download the free SeatGeek app today. Use promo code footballers all right guys it is week seven did you know that it's week seven it's uh, a great time of fantasy uh, this, this is, is this is time yes this is like the best time of the fantasy year where teams are starting to trade people are needing to make moves more action is happening uh, I, I need to tell people uh, i'm gonna just come clean on this one i'm two and four in one of our leagues and i'm beginning a comeback all right oh, it, yes, be you it are. began you last week already uh what you, were you going to say? My team? You, you pretty my much team have is delicious. one of, if not. I think you have the second best team in the league. Your your team is a team I do not want to play. But the ball's bounced the wrong way. I started 1-4. and four. I got the win last week. I'm throwing it out there because I'm facing the 6-0 and o team this week. And I'm putting it out there to the fans. I'm going to win this game. <sighs> and, this I'm a, this and I'm is, coming back. This is the game for your season. I'm going to prove to everybody starting 1-4 and four don't matter. Your team is complete proof that uh, sometimes you can have the best team and breaks just fall and you lose. Yeah. Well, so, which, and you should not panic, which you have not done like a professional. You have maintained <laughs> your team. You have actually improved your team instead of tilt selling guys. You yep. know, one of the things that happens for a lot of people, especially if you're just in a regular league, like, you know, a lot of our listeners out there, they play in a couple of leagues or just one regular league and they're, they're not <laughs> dominating and they're not out. They're not Owen <laughs> six. This is where the people who keep playing and keep listening and keep making waiver wire moves and the right trades get way better than you would think because there are players in all of our leagues that start dropping out. They, they start being slow on the waiver. They start caring less because they think they're out. Don't think you're out. And you can come back, make the playoffs, win a championship, and give us the credit. Uh <laughs> It's funny you said that at the end because somebody sent us a, uh, I think it was in the review, uh, an iTunes review, and they credited Jason, and they said what's been ringing through their head since the beginning of the season after the draft was that fantasy football leagues are not won in the draft. That's right. He said it's been in his head, and so he's been making moves every single week, just getting a little bit better and a little bit better. He's sitting there. He's 5-1 and one now because he made some moves. So, uh, yeah, every week, build on it. You know, you, you can't predict. You can't choose your opponent so you just put the best roster out there play the odds and now it's time to talk week seven guys let's get into the forecast fantasy forecast all right let's kick it off with the thursday night game an important piece of news with uh I oh, okay we forgot uh jordan reed's back at practice yes True. yes True. uh this needs to be noted for any tight end needy team because when he plays as he's already proven again this year. He is a tight end one. He's a tight end one. So he's back in practice. He's trending to play. Just and, want people to know that. And you can have him this whole week before his next concussion. <clears throat> Maybe. Well, they're on. I think they're on bye next week. Oh, so you get Are you for, a you doubter? Get two weeks. <laughs> All right. Well, he does. He does. He can get concussed during the bye. Yeah. He has a paper route. <laughs> uh, the Seahawks face the 49ers tonight on Thursday night football. Uh, you know the Seahawks have not had a good start to this season. Did you notice? I've I have noticed that. Not exactly. Uh, you know, fourth quarter collapses. They've had leads, I believe, in three of their games that they've lost in the fourth quarter. That What's Carolina going on game. with the? It, it, is Marshawn Lynch going to write the ship for them? Yeah, uh, he's certainly <laughs> going to help, and it sounds like he is one hundred percent healthy. And for if for those who are concerned about Lynch, Lynch has a 
a great history against San Francisco of either getting 100 yards or a touchdown or both. I think he's a great play this week. I'm not scared by the matchup at all. Russell Wilson is also very high on my rankings. I didn't look to see where he was on yours yet, so we can check on that. Russell uh, Wilson. <laughs> Russell Wilson. He is number five for Jason. He's seven on my list. I think he could he could end up higher. That's kind of where he landed on the list, but I think the matchup is just great for him tonight. Are you guys all on the Russell Wilson train? No, not really. I actually think that it's going to be a low-scoring game, so I just I don't want my quarterback involved in a in that mess of a Russell Wilson game. has been pretty much the most even consistent. though the 49ers are the worst against the pass yeah e even so it's just because it's of in, it's in San Francisco you, yeah I mean, and you I, saw what New Orleans did last week that's a good point it's just because of the uh because of the divisional nature of this NFC West matchup and the way that the games again of Seattle against San Francisco have tended to go especially in San Francisco if it was in Seattle I would be perfectly fine with Russell Wilson. Yeah, that's a he, good point. He tends to blow them out at home, but when he's on the road uh and they're just that offensive line is is a mess. So I I am looking for a different option right yeah. now. Yeah. I I would be fine rolling him if you've got him. If if you're able to win with him, if your team has him and you've been winning, then you should be okay cuz what he did last week is what he's going to do this week, which is what he did the week before last week, which is what he's going to do the week after next week. It's just that's what he does. He gets you about 20 points, depending on your scoring system. Uh, is there a wide receiver in this game that you want to actually play? No. On either side of the ball? No. No. Well, Jeremy, uh, uh, I would I would say Jimmy Graham. That's yep. the wide receiver I want to play. So are you on board with me? <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I think he's a fine play every couple of weeks. Um, maybe every other week. I, I would be fine playing him this week because I think it's a good matchup. Uh, but okay. I, I don't love him. And Colin Kaepernick, are we sitting him today? This yeah, week. yeah. Okay. Colin Kaepernick against This is one of those off weeks. He was our start of the week last week. Had a monster yeah. game. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit shocked I actually, here. you know, I rated Kaepernick kind of high. Um, Higher than you guys, I'm sure. To, to sideswipe yeah, this conversation, I'm shocked that in our league, no one bid on Jordan Reed in our league. So who got him? I did. Because I, I paid How for did, him. Oh, you did pay for yeah, him? Yeah. I, I was going to say, he was my top uh, waiver claim. I paid up for Jordan Reed. How much? 11 bucks. Oh, well, you're going to get a concussed Jordan Reed for $11. Yep. So, I mean, because if he goes out again next week, I don't know. I, it might be worth the chance. It's absolutely worth the chance to me. Yeah. To me. To me. Yeah, that's fine. I, uh, it looks like I ended up with C.J. Spiller then. Yep. Yeah, the, the truth is I, I don't think there's a lot of players you want to play in tonight's game, which is a shame. I love watching Thursday Night Football with things that affect my fantasy game. But if you had to rank the guys that you would play in this game, I, I don't even have Carlos Hyde. Uh, I think I've got him as a low RB3. So in most of my teams, he wouldn't even be in the lineup. I would say Russell Wilson first, <laughs> and then Jimmy Graham, and uh, that's okay. about it. It's Lynch, Lynch and Graham oh, Lynch, are the, of course. Lynch are the first. guys that I want to play, basically. Well, and, and Jimmy Graham is fine. All right, let's go ahead and hop across the pond. Oh, that was... The worst. <laughs> I, I, that was nothing. That wasn't an accent. Oh, that was it, just a different voice. Okay. That, uh, I, I, I see the backpedal. No, 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 no. I'm not saying I wasn't trying. I'm just saying the way it ended up oh. was just like me changing the inflection of my voice and speaking normal English. Like that was not, I mean, uh. there was nothing to that. Oh, man. Very nice. I, I, I was going to try again, but so, I'm not going to. The Bills face the Jaguars in please, London. Please try again. Do you think London's like, ah, give us a different game? No. I, I think the EJ they, Manuel Bortle? Oh. Oh, I forgot about the EJ Manuel factor. Yeah, I mean, you got a, a Bortles factor and a Manuel factor. Yeah, I, I man, I like watching Blake Bortles play. It's... Well, you, yeah, I mean, you you're, get, you're a big interception guy. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, you get... A, a lot of passing yards. You get the the car crash effect occasionally with Blake Bortles. Uh, but I don't know. I think Jacksonville's actually an entertaining team to watch. You got a fist up in the air. Joy Bell was bid on and purchased in our league. By whom? Multiple teams. That's ridiculous. $7. <laughs> Moving on Sorry. from Joy Bell. Sorry. We do not need to. So, let's, so players you're excited we'll get to about that. in this game. Uh, Shady McCoy clearly is a. He's a top running back option for me. I don't. What about you guys? Absolutely, yeah. 100%. In this game, I mean, he he seems like he's you know no setback. Seems like he's doing okay. 
EJ Manuel needs to lean on the running game. McCoy will be involved in the passing game. I, I see no reason why having no Harvin and no Watkins doesn't lend itself to McCoy just getting more targets by default. For and this, sure. this is a personal note to Coach Rex Ryan. If I see another run option of EJ Manuel uh, stealing a LaShawn McCoy touchdown, I'm going to lose my mind. Well, you know, you will, but they'll be okay with it. I, I know. I'm just I'm letting him know that my personal health is on sure, the line. Sure, sure. And sure, maybe you care about you'll winning. You'll lose you'll lose the rest of oh, your mind. I want to win football games. Blech. My mental health is on the line if you run another EJ Manuel run option like that. Did you so we said Harvin's out, but did you have you guys been following this? No. He uh he is out for as Rex Ryan said personal reasons. He did not travel for personal reasons. He is reportedly very very frustrated with the injuries that he suffered. Mm -hmm. And there was even some false reports that he was considering retirement due to the hip injury kind of recurring. it. So, you know, it, it seems like there's something going on beyond the injuries with the team too, because Rex Ryan basically just said, yeah, he's not here. Huh. Yeah, that's, so. that's interesting. That's, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> it's not good, but it's pretty par for the course. Yeah. Regarding EJ Manuel, I, I did all my quarterback stats this last uh, y yesterday um, you know, we projected a little bit early in the week going yeah, the for rankings, our stream of the, the week. The rankings are up. But the obviously. rankings are completely up now, and I actually have EJ Manuel. I believe I've got him at like nine. I've got him as a QB nine? one. What? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, really. I, that's just how the stats fall. Just because of Jacksonville? Jacksonville? Yeah, Jacksonville is a is a juicy matchup here. I expect uh, a decent score in this game. I, I, I know that Vegas has it a little bit lower. I this is one of those games, just like last last week, Vegas had one of those games really low that ended up high scoring that I thought was going to be higher scoring. This is another one of those. The Jags-Bills, pretty much I feel like every week Jacksonville gets a low line and they're putting up points. So I, I, Well, I, I you know, like, coming from the guy who streamed Brian Hoyer last week, this doesn't surprise me. Well, I, yeah. I was going to say you should – Change your official stream of the week to no. EJ Manuel then. Yeah, yeah that's where you have him ranked because above Landry. EJ Manuel is actually ranked above Landry. And well, and Landry's probably not going to play now. Exactly. So I would say. Is that an official change? I don't have a button for that, but. <laughs> <laughs> official change of the week. Uh, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll say EJ Manuel's my okay. guy right now. All right. <laughs> That'll there, cost you $8. But again, to, available. To change your stream after the Available fact. in 100% of the league. So I'm still staying right at the bottom. Okay. How does this affect Charles Clay? Charles Clay I, has to have a good week here. Jacksonville hasn't been that great against the tight end. You don't have a lot of other weapons. You've got yep. Robert Woods, who I think, as well as you do, is Big a time good streamer. You got Hollywood. Do you want to know where Chris I have Hogan? You don't want to know where I have Robert Woods this week? Do I? You probably don't. Oh man, you probably don't. I want to hear. I it, think though. I had him pretty high too. Uh, well, I have to scroll down because you guys probably yanked him all the way down the list. Let me see. You where have he him. Is. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay, uh, have, let me let me no, put no, it, no, let me no, put it I have him too high. Let me put it this way. I have him 19. I have him at, Here's what I say. And I'm almost double handy. He, he can't he has he's at number 10 right now. Whoa! Which is too high. Which is too high, but I think he's a 2 this week. I didn't realize that's the thing when we do our stats, we literally we're going through, we're playing game by game, we're putting the stats into a, a database and then we just are copy pasting the list. So we're not like saying, "Oh, this guy is my 10, so I want to line him up at 10." He'll drop a little bit for me. I think he has a two, a startable two this week. Jacksonville's defense is, is porous. It is Swiss cheese. It I, is easy to dissect. I don't have a problem with him as a two. And uh, to join in with that, if you are a desperate person in need, I honestly don't mind uh, playing Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan no. had, had a great stretch run, I think, last year of three or four games where he was very fantasy relevant. Uh, and he just, he's a guy who can succeed if he gets the targets. He was three for 52 and a touchdown two weeks ago uh, who, who in that we, final are we drive. Are Woods or Hogan? No, Hogan. Okay. Hogan. Um, and Robert Woods had, I believe, six targets last week. So Robert Woods is a you know, really good player. And that's, yeah, he was four you know, for 47 last week. Yeah, he was drafted, uh, what was he, second-round pick. Yeah, he's a second-round pick last year, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Year no, before? A couple years no. ago. Well, yeah, way back in 2013. Okay. <laughs> so the Jacksonville wide receivers, I like both of them. I like Hearns and Robinson. Robinson's injury, it doesn't seem to be any kind of a concern right now. Uh, and Julius Thomas is, he's an okay quarterback. Uh, I think you're me. starting Clay and he's a quarterback? Julius Thomas Did is I a quarterback a qu now? Yeah, I think he's a terrible quarterback. All right, the Browns face the Rams. <laughs> uh, the Rams are coming off the bye. 
and they're at home, and Gurley is going to run, and he's going to run well, and I really wish he was on more of my teams. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that assessment. You wish he was on more of Andy's teams? Yep. That's weird. <laughs> That's great. Uh, <laughs> you, you really love Andy. <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about the Travis Benjamin effect that is taking place. He is being he's targeted a, consistently. He is a wide receiver one right now in almost every scoring format. Let me give you his numbers last week. Nine for 117. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, he hasn't scored in three weeks, but, I mean, six, six, nine. Yeah, I, I like when a guy is not scoring and putting up a lot of targets and receptions because you know the touchdowns are going to come if you're being utilized in the offense. I know we were kind of down on uh, Benjamin at the beginning of the year, right? He was only catching. Because well, he was getting three targets yeah, a game. Yeah, three targets a game. And we saw the beginning of last year him do the same thing and then trail off into nowhere land. Travis, Benjamin, or Dante Moncrief this week? Mm, I think old man. What's uh, who do the Colts the Colts take on the Saints? I'm gonna definitely th- taking Moncrief just because of the matchup. Travis Benjamin or Stefan Diggs this week? Benjamin. I'm gonna go Benjamin. Charles Diggs. Johnson, I think, is gonna be back. Yeah, Diggs is a it, we love the upside, but he's still got a lot of question marks. Travis Benjamin or Michael Crabtree. Ooh. Uh, I don't what, the Raiders don't have the greatest matchup. They're playing right? the Chargers. Yeah, I love the Chargers pasties, so I'm going Travis Benjamin. All right. That works. Uh Barnage. I heard you, an, another you nickname. Play him. Oh, another one. I can throw one out the there. The quest for Gary Barnage's nickname. Big Rig Barnage. Mm. Because he's always hauling in them touchdowns. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with my... Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Maximum Barnage. Keep, keep the suggestions coming. I liked it. I didn't think it was yeah, necessarily yeah. the winner, but I liked it. Yes. It's it's not... Uh, Jason, Carnage Barnage is just... That's just too too no, easy. Not it's no, just no, no, no. Maximum, maximum Barnage. Barnage. Oh, yeah. That's still the winner. You're right. All right. Uh, anybody else in this game that is worth discussing? Is there a running back on the Browns? If you had to start oh, one, who who is it? I I, Bra- I who have, is it? Who is it? It's Duke. It, it, yeah, it's got to be Duke. Okay. I have Crowell in a lineup. That shows how bad my bye weeks are right now. Yeah, I, that's terrible. I think I've got You're him a terrible running player. back seven hundred and twenty-two. Uh, I like the Rams D a lot this week at home against the Browns. Uh, See, and I like the Browns D. I know, I know. I think both of them are yeah, but, are acceptable. Yeah. I think this you like the Browns D because of the St. Louis offense, and you yes. like the Rams D because of the Rams D. Yeah, it, but here's the thing about the, for the Rams D. And they're at home. Josh McCown, uh, Josh McCown is getting it done, and he got it done decently well against the Denver defense. He had a, a pair of touchdowns. Now he had a he had pick some six. pick six, which if the Rams can do that, of course you're you're in a very good position, but. In one of our leagues where I've been holding out hope for, <laughs> for uh, Tyrod Taylor to finally come back, uh, and we have a, a shorter bench in that in that league, I have gone full, don't care, and I'm riding Josh McCown in that league. Hmm. and Because I'm, I'm getting in on this action. I, I don't, that's not the listener leagues. league, is it? No. I don't mind that play. When I was statting uh, McCown and looking back, it really, it really, truly came down to a question of: Is McCown for real with what he's been doing this year, or was it those matchups? And I kind of leaned more towards the matchups, but I had a tough decision going because I looked at this, and this is a tough D to pass against. But McCown has just been fantastic, so I, I, I hear you there. And if he does well against the Rams, you got to add him. He's gonna be close to you know an Andy Dalton. Just if, if he were to put up you know, 302 against the Rams, that'd be awesome. All right. All right. Uh, let's move it on to the Lions in Joyke Bell against the Vikings. <laughs> against the Vikings. Is Joyke Bell really playing? The Vikings are – of course he's playing. He practiced in full all week. I, that There's a reason people are buying him. I, I, no, that, I don't understand a reason to buy Joyke Bell. I do. Zach Zinner's gone. Abdullah puts it on the turf. Theoretic gets very few carries. Joyke Bell has a chance at 15 carries this week. Zach Zinner being That's gone a actually makes a big difference to me mentally because there's nobody behind Joyke Bell that can get those tough yards, those short yardage. You have to use him. And I agree, he could he could get usage. He's going to be the goal line type of back. So I will bet anybody in this room that Joyke Bell will not have more than 50 yards on the ground. I... What am I doing? Oh, <laughs> that was oh, that was a sucker bet. Th- that was a pure Marty McFly. Like you challenged me, I hit the button and then I think about it. 
Oh man, I just that's great because then I can root for him. I mean, it's it's oh, it fits yes. the preseason just I w- fine. I was in the middle of saying I would never take that. Bet I mean, when that, he hit that button, that bet is so bad. I mean, I'm gonna actually gonna take the water for it this afternoon. That's ridiculous. All right, I cannot wait to. Oh, if I win this though, it'll be great. We, we need to have one of the. Uh, on the water wheel app, we need to have one of those where it's like the the person getting wet has to just dump the water right on their own head. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be, that'd be there should upgrade. be one. By the way, that app is so close. Uh, it should. It, we we just gotta push it live. It's almost there. Well, there we're was, doing it live. There was some changes to the iOS right. store. Uh, we're, yeah, getting it, we're getting it there. All right. So the wide receivers in the. Uh, well, never mind. Let's stay with the. Uh, let's stay with the running backs for a second. Uh, Joyke Bell, Abdullah, Riddick. Uh, right now, fantasy wise, Riddick would be the only guy with yep. flex in an emergency. I, I agree. AP is he going to do better than twenty six? AP destroys the Lions. That's good. I'm facing him in our in that league. I yeah, good need luck. To come back. He from. destroys the Lions. Um, is Matt Stafford? You know, he had a big week. Is he playable this week against Minnesota uh, in Minnesota? He's I, all right. I think I've got him about a. a you got a bye week going on. If you got Dalton on bye, would you play Stafford? Sure. Yeah, I think I I've got him at 12 or somewhere right around there. Would where you, he's on the cusp of Would you of play it. him or would you play Ryan Fitzpatrick at New England? I think I'd play Stafford. Yeah, I, th- I think I would go, man. That's New, that, New that England gives great. up. New England's 24th yeah. against uh, quarterbacks. I think I might go Fitzpatrick there. I was just curious. I just have curious. them. But, but I, I don't mind at all. If, if you feel like your team really needs some upside this week, Stafford's a great play. And, but the Vikings do have – a very solid uh, defense, and they're at home, and they're favorites. And so. Yeah. All right. So, you know, there are a lot of guys that could be started at the wide receiver position across both teams. Uh, you know, Calvin Johnson, Golden Tate, um, Wallace. People like Wallace and Stephon Diggs. Yeah. Um, I have Diggs very high this week. I really? Think, uh, yeah, I do. I think uh, – even with, even with Charles Johnson set to come back. Yes, I do. I do. The quantity of targets and the production on those targets and his after the catch to me, I, I just I, I'm riding Stefan Diggs right now. I don't think it's really gonna slow down. Yeah, we all have him in you know, I, I think you've got him thirty, Mike, so you know, wide receiver three, I've got him twenty five, still three, but on the cusp of two. It's hard for me though, if he's on my roster to unless there's a a need. If I can start someone else over him, I'm probably I just want him on my roster and hold on. Because you have no idea. You could go out there and Charles Johnson could split the you know snaps with him half, and then you. Got I don't nothing. think it. I don't think it's going to matter. It, and, and it, it well, might it, not. It, but I would rather. I would rather wait the week and find out. Sure. Whether no, it that's matters. fine. Where it that's matters fine. is when they're in two wide sets. If Stephon Diggs is not even on the field, that's where it really matters, and that's the question mark. I, I think personally that Stephon Diggs will be on the field. Yeah, in so too do wide. I. So do I. But. Even just just my opinion and thinking that I don't know if I'm uh, com- confident enough in that to say whatever he's going out there when he his his uh, snap stuff on Diggs trip. Robert Woods Woods really yeah. okay. I'd rather because you know he'll be out there exactly. Woods is a number one for his team this all right. week yeah all right the Texans at Miami uh, do you buy into Miami continuing to improve or is this like a one week wonder it's a very very difficult proposition because teams teams can do these kinds of things where you're on a bye week some a, there was a drastic change so the team rallies and then that momentum kind of wears off the emotion is spent completely in that game and uh, i really wanted to take brian hoyer as my as my stream of the week this week again because just like mccown i think brian hoyer might be for real with hopkins He's, you know, he's just throwing to a fantastic receiver. He, if you throw 22 times at Hopkins, you're going to have a good game. There's just no way That's you That's the don't. old Stafford effect. Right, yeah. exactly. And so I, I wanted to take him, and the whole reason I didn't was because of the giant question mark about Miami. And here's where I think they are a little bit more for real as far as a change is the fact that they went with that momentum on the road and won, and now they're coming home. So Yeah, but Tennessee's just not good. Well, sure, but I'm saying the crowd and the momentum. Who's not good? T- who they played last week. Tennessee. Oh, yeah, yeah. It took me a second as well. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying they're coming home. They're playing. Bet- uh, uh, the crowd has to be completely, you know, riled up. So I- I'm leaning towards it's going to stick. Yeah, and I, I hope I, it is. I would, I would lean that way as well because the personnel is, is there. And let me say uh, th- this is my biggest takeaway 
from the coaching personnel change. Jordan Cameron finally got in the end zone. Uh, and there, and you know who got like four or five targets? Who? Landry. I did notice that. Landry he, did not get his double-digit targets. If he did not run... Yeah, uh, but that game was... that. There's a lot of reasons. I'm not going to read into that in one, through one game at all. No, That's the, true. I don't know... <clears throat> how how much was Landry out there in the fourth? Yeah, Obviously, they exactly. pulled Lamar Miller. You know, he, I'm just Lamar Miller didn't saying even that play in the fourth. I think the offense is going to change, and it changed in a positive effect for Jordan Cameron. He's, I think he still only had three catches, but he scored. But who is coaching the Miami Dolphins? What position did that guy play? Hmm, tight end. Yeah. He only had three catches, though. Yes. That, I said he only had three catches, but he finally got in the end zone. And I think having a a tight end coach or a former tight end player come in as your head coach and say, hey, we have a really great tight end that we paid to come into this offense. Maybe we should get him involved. Especially for a team that's struggled in the red zone. Hasn't been able to, you know. So that, that's just, I think Jordan Cameron, if he's on your waiver wire, I think he's a, a solid pickup right Yeah, now. he at least has this skill set. And by the way, Landry had the same amount of snaps as previous weeks. Oh. Um. So, is but there any targets plummeted? Okay. Yeah. That, I'm just that. That because to me they is, because they that, went that to, was the point, right? Yeah. Didn't we already say that? I'm just I'm just reemphasizing the point that they went to the run game where they in where Miami had been using Jarvis Landry as the run game. Sure. And sure. Instead, and, but, they actually ran the ball. Yeah. I I still take a very wait and see approach. One game, you know. Uh. I. But it's a good thing to be looking for. Uh. Arian Foster. You're obviously starting him. You're starting Lamar Miller. Mm-hmm. That was a. Uh, that was me drinking. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So, yes. Lamar. Lamar Miller was. Oh no, he not was. He is. May, he is involved in the starts of the week. Okay, let's get through these next two games before we get to those starts of the week. The Saints facing the Colts. Uh, this one's in in Indianapolis, and I'd love to say this is the you know one of those games where the the Colts gets it together. Uh, get the Colts get it together. <laughs> yeah, that was that was tough. But I don't think it is really really i think it's going to be an okay game because N new orleans is coming off a, a game where they did play very well defensively and they put pressure on the quarterback um i luck has not been very good this year and every there have been three or four games whether it was the tennessee game or whatever uh, you know where oh this is the week that this offense is going to figure it out and there's something else wrong and it's not just uh, that one punt call that is going wrong. <laughs> Which I saw a lengthy interview with uh, the Colts punter who was running through the, the play and, and kind of explaining why everything went terrible of the the, the guy, the, the, the person who replaced the center had to do so because the original player got hurt in the game and there was an audible... Uh, added into the play during practice at which and the the guy who played center did not hear that and it was just all this like giant list of excuses. then call a timeout Chuck. This giant list of excuses and like well why did you call that play then <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, so it sounds like a coaching problem yep it sure does i don't blame those players for being out there trying to execute no, it i don't either when the coach calls the play so. i do think that Indianapolis gets together this week offensively okay. against the that's, Saints. That's fine. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to believe that. The Saints haven't been good, but they did shut down Matt Ryan last week and uh, played very well on Thursday night. They had 10, ga 10 days to prepare for this game, and uh, so I, I'm, I'm more of the middle of the road, but I, I see all the reasons why the Saints D has not been that good. And on the road uh, for the Saints D, right, that this is in Indianapolis, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's the biggest change that I see from from their defense standpoint. Yeah, I, I love fine. Luck. That's Finally, three hundred. Well, you're going to start Luck, week. so let's talk about a guy that you you know some guys that you may or may not start. Moncrief, are you starting him? Yeah. Hilton. Yep. Yep. What about Snead and Cooks? Yes, I will start both of them. I. Will what about start... Andre Johnson? Nope. That's a trick question. Of course not. <laughs> I was going to say I was, I'll start Snead over Cooks this week. Yeah, I agree with that. Andre Johnson or Chris Hogan. Andre, <laughs> I don't know uh, I'm going to go Andre Johnson. Know, deeper league. Higher scoring game. Yeah, I'll go Johnson. Are you starting Ben Watson? Are you are you chasing the points? If you have a tight end need, I don't mind. Is he the best tight end in this game? Uh, Yeah, probably. No. To I don't, start? I, I don't think so. I, I, I think that this is because of the past D that we've seen the the – We've seen the Saints give up a lot of points to the tight end position. I think Kobe Fleener is a is a decent play. Um, just ben, be, what's sorry, that? sorry. Go ahead. 
just just because of the the matchup, I I would rather have him in this. Ben game. Watson or Zach Ertz. Ooh. Ooh. I'll tr- I'll try it out with Watson. Yeah, ben Watson I'm... or Jacob Tammy. Watson. Watson. That's interesting that you guys said that more vehemently when Tammy has been much better than Ertz. Yeah, I just, Tammy. I got that bias, man. Tammy really let me down last week. It was a it was a prime matchup yeah. for him. No, you're right. I think Tammy might be a perfect example of what you get when you chase those points on a guy that's a middling tight end because he had eight for ninety four against Washington, then he's three for thirty two last week, and he hasn't scored all year. So, all right, Steelers face off against the Chiefs in this game. Um, you know, uh, Big Ben could be back. Yes, if he's not back. It's in Arrowhead, right? Yes. yes. If he's not back, I think the Chiefs win the game. So uh, I, yeah, I can see that, and, and I think their defense holds up pretty darn well. They played very good last week. We we gave you the numbers for Adrian Peterson last week against Kansas City. Um, I'm I'm not wrong on that, right? That was the matchup last week, sixteen to ten. I don't, I'm leaving you on an island on this one, man. Really? <laughs> Mi- Minnesota beat Kansas I'll... City last week, sixteen to ten, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I'm, it just space out for a second. <laughs> so I've had the question about Kelsey. Now there are two trains of thought. Everybody takes logically with injury to a guy like Macklin losing Jamal Charles, not having the involvement in the offense. I've taken the approach that it does not help Travis Kelsey to lose Macklin or Charles because the offense is, you know, he, he's struggling for end zone targets, touchdowns anyways. I don't think it's going to help, you know, when teams can bracket Kelsey because they've got Albert Wilson on the outside and uh, do you guys take that approach, or do you take the approach that, okay, the targets are going to be up a little bit because he's alone? Yeah, I, I take the approach that his ceiling is lower and his floor is higher. I expect him to get more targets, get more passes in the middle of the field, have way less red zone opportunities because they're not moving the ball all the way down the field. So I, I see him essentially as a, a, a higher floor tight end, which I kind of like from my tight end. I would, You know, I, I, I want to get – you know, a, a nine or 10 out of my tight end assuredly then chase after the touchdown and hope I get a 15, but end up with a three or a four. So, yeah, I I think Mac when being out would be bad for Travis Kelsey. I think. And we are monitoring that. Yeah. That it, still, we, we don't, we don't know yet, on, but I, I think the defense can bracket Travis Kelsey even more. And Andy Reed has just, he, Andy Reed doesn't like to get the ball to one of his best players in the offense, apparently. Or Alex Smith. I don't know what's going on if in it's, Kansas City. If it's Landry Jones, do you start Martavis Bryant or Antonio Brown? Yeah. Because of the defensive face. I, I, I think this week, personally, no matter who the quarterback is, I start both of those guys. I, Martavis Bryant. Okay, let's pretend Big Ben is back. Martavis Bryant or Calvin Johnson? Oh, Johnson. pretending he's back? It's still Big Calvin. Ben is back. Yeah, it's still Calvin. It's still Martavis Calvin. Bryant or Allen Robinson? Robinson. Martavis Bryant or Mike Evans? I might, Mar- go, I might go Martavis. Bryant. If Big Ben's back against Kansas City. Amari Martavis. Cooper. Martavis. Okay. Cooper. You're obviously starting Le'Veon Bell. Yes. Uh, Chand. Char. Char. Wood. Char. Char- War- I'm trying to pick which one I want to go with. Charbroiled. Charbroiled. Uh, Charkandrick West. They're, the news ab- about Charkandrick is they still are talking him up. Like he's going to be their main running back. So I'll, I'll give him another chance. The, the Steelers defense has actually been extremely solid against the run and the Steelers are a one of my top streaming defensive picks of the week I like them uh especially if yeah Mac, that's fine if Macklin is out I like the Steelers defense a lot uh I think that that uh Landry Jones is an upgrade for Antonio Brown and Martavis Bryant over Michael Vick uh I Michael Vick is he Michael Vick cannot read a defense uh, if if his first read is not there then he has to run. That's kind of the quarterback that he has devolved into where Landry Jones is at least he's a prototypical pocket guy. So I think that that improves the the baseline for both, for especially Brown and uh, Martavis. Martavis, just, he does whatever he does where he, he can score at any moment. All right, let's go ahead and get into the uh, one of my favorite segments, the starts of the week. Starts of the week. All right, we're going to take some time right now to go through the guys that we like the very most at each position. We're trying to pick some guys that are uh, essentially not guaranteed starts every single week or people at this point in the season you have some doubts about. Are they going to perform well? Are they not? 
you you know you'd be making some decisions here. So let's start at the quarterback position. Uh, Mike, you have chosen very simply. Well, I'm surprised I'm, that this is even permitted here. I just gave that whole introduction on how we choose guys that are difficult to choose to start, and you choose the guy who might be I the saw, number one. I I guess I I did not read through everyone. I thought people were picking Palmer. No, we 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 mentioned Palmer in our notes because Palmer to me is he's the a, number one. He's an one. obvious must start. Oh, dude, he's yeah, gonna he's, go away. He's my number one. Okay, we'll okay. give you a second. I'll start. Uh, all right, go ahead. Uh, I'll look through. My quarterback of the week, since I am not choosing Palmer or Luck, I think those guys are obviously out there. I love Palmer and Luck's matchup. But I'm going with Ryan Tannehill at home against Houston. Houston is 27th against the pass, and the weapons for Tannehill are aplenty. He has uh, good receiving options, whether it's Landry, whether it's Cameron, whether it's Lamar Miller getting more involved in the game. I just think that Tannehill has at least the upside to perform well at home in this game. And so I'm going to go with Tannehill against a very bad passing defense. Jason, who's your quarterback? You know, before I tell you my quarterback, let me just say you really made that argument well, and I really now like Tannehill. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. All right. My pick this week uh, is going to be Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles is a guy I, I, was, I would have gone with my stream of the week, except Mike had claimed him before me. Yeah. I expect that London game to be higher scoring than Vegas says. It, we're we're going to see. We're going to see. I, 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 you know, it's one of those things where... Don't we have a Blake Bortles top 10 bet? No, we have a Blake Bortles head-to-head -head with Ryan Tannehill. Oh, that's right. Perfect. Mm. Uh, by then by default Jason should involve himself in the exact same yeah, bet. that's up to Jason I'll give him a second to think it over let me My, what yeah you give me a second you so what the when I I thought everyone was going with Palmer so I was going to go with Philip Rivers who is a guy who is w likely one of two quarterbacks on a team and Philip Rivers has and won, that's fine he's facing one, Oakland I, so I think he, everyone's starting he has him. one of the best matchups but uh besides that then I will go with I'm going back to Eli Manning Eli Manning. Love it. Eli Manning had a steamy, hot, fresh turd on oh, yeah. Monday night all over his shorts. Yep. And pooped that, in his big boy pants. Those things can happen with Eli Manning, especially against a division rival like the Eagles. Now, it's another division game for him against the Cowboys. However, it is, it's at home. The Cowboys' defense is giving up some serious points to, uh, to opposing quarterbacks with – uh, uh, multi-touchdown games the last three weeks that the Cowboys have played. Uh, I just they're start they're throwing out Matt Castle. I just don't think that the Cowboys are equipped for this game. And Eli Manning, besides last week, had a string a string of games where he was dominating. So I'm going. I'm okay going back to him. Uh, give me a running back, Mike. Let's go through the running backs. My running back of the week is Lamar Miller, 19 for 113 last week. And he, they, they are taking on the Texans. And the Texans, uh, if you look back a couple weeks, were demolished by the Falcons and, and Indianapolis on the ground. So I like, I'm, I'm buying into the resurgence of they're going to feed Lamar Miller the ball. Jason, and, what's your running back? I'm buying into the quality of Doug Martin. He's passed the eyeball test. You know, it's is he for real? Is he not for real? Coming off a bye against a good running defense in Washington. But I believe Doug Martin is going to be good the rest of the year. So I, I say start Doug Martin. Well, and I, I'm going to go out on a limb, too, and tell you that Washington's not good. Washington right. was they a mirage. Got, they got, got destroyed by Atlanta. They got destroyed by Chris Ivory. It, Doug Martin has the same ability to succeed like Freeman and Ivory did. Yep. So uh, my running back start of the week is the bounce back game for Latavius Murray. I know we've been it's worried about him. But San Diego is so good against the pass that they just give up a lot of points on the ground against uh, fantasy running backs. Murray is coming off the bye. His health should be improved. I think they need him dramatically to improve that offense. So I, I like Latavius Murray. I would, I'd roll him out there as a two uh, with uh, running back one upside. So yeah, I, I love that pick. My wide receiver is going to be downtown John Brown. Woohoo! John Brown's coming off a 196-yard game for the Cardinals. They're facing the 31st worst team how are the ravens not dead last yeah they're they're close they're darn close <laughs> and uh this is a monday night game at home the place is going to be rocking john brown is super reliable in terms of just that go-to guy for carson palmer i love john brown this week and my guy i'm piggybacking with you i went with michael floyd who right, finally got right. involved in the offense five for 50 with a hoosh down last week uh, and Michael Floyd is a guy who may is probably available on your waiver wire if he didn't get picked up during the the normal waiver run. And if and, and the deal is, I want a piece 
of this game. I want yeah. a piece of Carson Palmer versus the Ravens secondary. Uh, there, here, look. There is a great possibility that all three guys, Larry, uh, Floyd, and Brown, go off. But I just, I want, I want a piece of that delicious, delicious Raven pie. I completely agree. My rankings show it out more than I thought. Also, if you're in Arizona, you know, use the SeatGeek app and go to the game. We'll be there. We'll, we'll uh, take a picture together as we watch the Cardinals destroy them. Uh, my wide receiver is Eric Decker. Yeah, I like Eric this. Decker. Fitzpatrick, they're going to go, and the Jets are going to have a good, tough matchup in New England. Well, New England is known for shutting down the opposing team's number one option. That's just what Bill Belichick likes to do. Not going to happen. I don't think they do shut down <laughs> Brandon Marshall. Can't stop Brandon. But my point is, it's always the number two guy that kind of has the better game. Eric Decker's been great, so I love Eric Decker. Well, he's week. got a touchdown streak going, too. Yeah. Um, let's hit the tight end position then, Jason. Why don't you kick it off with your tight end? Sure. We all have Antonio Gates is everybody's number one. Everybody's number one uh, in this, which is surprising because Gronkowski can be there too. I don't blame you if you got Gronk, but we all have Gates one. Yeah, he's gonna destroy this week. So if you've got him or can get him, play him. But that's too easy. So I'm gonna take Delaney Walker. Atlanta is 26th against the tight end, and Ben Watson just lit them up. Mettenberger, uh, a good friend of. It's good the for tight us. end position, so I'm going uh, Delaney Walker. I love that pick. And I'm going with my man Zeus, who has been uh, – I guess he's been disappointing, even though he's really not been. Why are you shaking your head? Nobody's not – nobody's sitting Zeus. That's really? fine. No, nobody's sitting I Zeus. I think a lot of people – I've had a lot of questions coming through. As I've to, had a ton of, tons of questions of is it time to move on from Travis Kelsey, so I'm letting people know. I just don't know where you move to. You People chase Ben Watson like we've been talking about. I'm like, arguing with you for no good reason then. He's the fourth best tight end, though, so I'm surprised. I, that's what I'm saying, where he's not actually been disappointing. People just see the the flourish spike numbers of other tight ends. It's, yeah, and he hasn't Kelsey's, scored in five weeks. Kelsey's so. not putting yeah. those up. Yep. And the Steelers against elite tight ends, which I still consider Travis Kelsey to be an elite tight end, have been destroyed. No, I have no problem with the start whatsoever. Yep. I, I definitely would start Kelsey. I got Jason Witten coming back off the bye against the Giants. I like the Matt Castle effect where he might be a little bit more involved in getting the ball downfield. And even if – when I say downfield, I simply mean over the head of Darren McFadden, for goodness sakes, <laughs> into somebody else's arms. In fact, I, I had the option this morning to draft Terrence Williams – or drop Terrence Williams to get Andre Johnson, and I just said no because I think Terrence Williams has just a, a much higher upside this week. I'm not a Castle believer. He'll probably throw 11 picks, but – uh, at least he's going to drive the ball down the field a little bit. The Giants are 28th against tight ends. Um, you know, this is a nice matchup for Witten. He's very I, safe this week. It took every ounce of willpower that I have on this morning coming off of very little sleep Yeah, to not put my man, Kristen Michael, as my running back I, start of I the was, week. I was going to say, how is C-Mike not your start <laughs> of the week here? Mike? I had a dream. Oh! I had a dream last night in my minimum four hours of sleep but between the uh, Back to the Future Marathon and my child waking up repeatedly and uh, feeling sick. So here's the dream I had, and, and we'll just reveal these. Chris and Michael got the ball five times on the opening drive and scored a touchdown. Ooh, wow. So, and that was, that was his dream as well. Chris, <laughs> he's been dreaming that for years so hey that's it for today's show we went a little longer we got week seven previewed for you starts of the week be sure to check out the website thefantasyfootballers.com get connected with us on jointhefoot.com and thanks for listening Goodbye. we'll be back tomorrow thank you for listening to another edition of the fantasy footballers podcast don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.